Welcome to New York. The field of study of Islamic movements is very heavily focused and shifted towards the nation of Islam, the Moorish Science Temple, and Sunni Orthodoxy. But there's a lot more to it than just that. People should see the Ahadi Muslim community as one of the first black Tower Muslim movements. When I come to New York this time, I've been focusing on Islam in this city. Generally, we would think of Alexander Russell Webb. He was one of the first prominent white converts to Islam. But there's a lot of context to that. He got exposed to Islam in the Philippines. He then came back to his native homeland. One of the original ways he was exposed to Islam was by contact with Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. He claimed he was the Messiah in India, the Mahdi. He then actually had a duel with Alexander Dawi, who ran the city of Zion. And lo, Dawi perished. But that was just the beginning. That was the first real substantive means of Islam being propagated within this country. And he was writing letters to Webb. And that's what started Webb's journey. And Webb was very grateful for that. Webb then went on to have his own career. He started his mission, started a magazine. However, a lot of these things actually folded in his own lifetime. Now specifically where my interest has lied has been in America. When I started, it was quite general research. And from then, what I've really come to see is I wanted to study how African Americans took up Islam. Now let's look at what current scholarship says. Let's look at the field of study. The field of study of Islamic movements is very heavily focused and shifted towards the nation of Islam, the Moorish Science Temple, and Sunni Orthodoxy. But there's a lot more to it than just that. I wanted to go behind all of this. Coming here and having done my research, putting all of my work together, what I've seen is Islam actually came in rather a different way to what we would like to think. Now, of course, we have to take into account those poor West Africans who were princes, kings, scholars, and they were taken into slavery, and they actually were the first people to bring Islam here. True, that all occurred before any Indian missionary got here. Fast forwarding past transatlantic slavery, fast forwarding past Mirza Ghulam Ahmed's claims, what happened then? It was actually his companion, Mufti Muhammad Sadiq. He was the first Islamic missionary in this country. And he was building on those existing relationships that Ahmed had already built within India into America. When he got here, he was put in detention. He had an incredibly tough time. He stayed in detention for several weeks. Paradoxically, actually the newspapers caught on to it and gave him more attention. He did get out to work. He caught hold of the newspapers, the universities. He wrote materials, he established a mosque. He moved all over the country. Now there's a lot more to his story in just the short time that he was here. And there was a lot more that occurred after he went as well. It was an incredibly tough time for him. He'd come all the way from India and spending time in England to a country he was not familiar with. He had nobody here. He had three prayers when he wanted to get here to establish a mission. He did that. The Chicago mission is still standing today. He wanted to establish a journal. The Muslim Sunrise is now the longest running journal within America in Islamic affairs. The third thing was to establish a community. He did that too. Decades later when he left, some of those members were still actively writing to him. So my story about studying Islam really started in New York and Chicago a number of years ago. Since then I've been back and forth trying to understand how Islam came to be in the Western world. Obviously England where I'm from, but America too. Mufti Sadiq, the early pioneer of Islam in the Western world, probably one of the greatest individuals in the history of Islam in the Western world. You know, he worked with Garvey, he worked with black thinkers and black outreach media. Uh, we need to re-examine our understanding of history. And these set the precedent for what was to happen a century later. I mean, we think about, you know, the musicians, and you know, I was just at Charlie Parker's residence, just a few blocks away from where I'm staying. You know, it's incredible to think that he saw the seed that was later embellished with an American culture, and that was Islam that was doing that, right? I think the other thing we probably need to focus in on that I can see is the Amdi community was the first to bring literature of Islam. The first biography, the first Qurans, and these were things that were really taken up by the African Americans, and they went on to lead in centers around the country. And this is real tangible stuff, and that's what a lot of my research seems to be focusing on. Now, in my research, what I've really seen is that we've kind of forgotten the African-American example of Islam. As British Muslims, well now I'm in America, but as British Muslims, we always think about Andalusia. And sure, that's a great example. African-American Muslims faced the challenges of racism, modernity, and Islamophobia a hundred years ago. Surely they're really relatable to us as well, as Muslims in the Western world, especially of the diaspora. Uh, but then several missionaries came afterwards. Again, Indians, and these were people spreading Islam that was that this was completely unprecedented. So whilst I've been here in New York, I've been going to Long Island, to Harlem, to Manhattan, everywhere, you know, trying to get into the field, look at old documents that haven't really come to the surface yet.
And then we can look at other missionaries as well. And what did they do? And the reason I want to focus on these people is because these things were parallel to the other Islamic movements. And actually, they set the tone. For example, Sufi Bengali, he actually wrote the first sirah in America, the first biography of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. There was the annual conventions that were established yearly and have been ongoing since then. It was the establishment of mosques all around the country. Now, I think what I'm developing more and more is people should see the Ahadi Muslim community as one of the first black power Muslim movements. It was transnational, it was pan-national at the same time, it was post-colonial. Now, that's all well and good, but really a lot of this was about shaking the spiritual shackles of colonialism. That was one of the messages in the early Muslim Sunrise. Now, talking 100 years ago, we're looking at the roaring 1920s. He was coming into an atmosphere where black thinkers had created an environment of post-colonial thinking, of pan-Africanism. Now, the thing is, we have to move past that. What happened a few decades later? Jazz became the predominant thought. Jazz became the predominant culture. And once again, FMD black Muslims were at the forefront of reinterpreting, reshaping an entire culture, forming bebop. Now it goes beyond that as well. Let's move a few decades later. What was the new wave in the 70s and 80s? It was black power, exemplified by the Black Panthers, by the Nation of Islam, and other black militant movements. And that was when Majlis Qadam Lamadiyya was set up, again, headed by African American Muslims, mostly converts. So I think what I've really come to see within this wonderful city, 100 years later, is Islam has always come to be here in some form. And it's always sat in parallel with other movements, pro-black or not.